Last week we talked a lot about um, adding integers. Today we are going to start 6.3, subtracting integers. So these are some rules for subtracting integers. These are the same exact rules that we had whenever we were adding integers, okay? So whenever you have the same sign, you're always going to add the numbers and keep the sign. Whenever you have different signs, you will always subtract the numbers and take the sign of what? The of the larger number, okay? Then there's one last thing. This is also a statement that we learned about when we watched the 6.2. You guys did it for the flipped classroom. But read me this last statement together. Every number has a sign, and that sign is directly in front of that number. Whether you're adding or subtracting, this is something you must remember. If you remember these rules and that statement right there, you will do excellent on adding or subtracting integers. The instructions here are asking us to find the difference. Um, so let's just look at, whoops, the first thing you want to think about is what the sign is. What sign is in front of this two? Positive. A positive. If you ever cannot see a sign, you know it's a positive, okay? What sign is in front of that seven? Negative. Negative. Same sign or different sign? Different. Different sign. What do you have to do? Subtract and take. So let's subtract those two. What's seven minus two? Five. Five. Now take the sign of the larger number. What's larger? Seven. Seven. Negative. So is it going to be positive or negative? Negative. Negative five. Okay. Who feels comfortable to do the next one for us? Gabby, do I have a same sign or a different sign here? Same. Same sign. This one is a negative and this one is also a negative. Same sign. What do we do? Add, add the numbers and keep the sign. So when you add them together, you get what? You get 14, and then you're going to keep the sign that you see there, which is negative 14. Okay, so using those same rules that we had with adding, we're going to also use them when we subtract. Now, here's another idea that I want you to write down. What this is saying here, it says a double negative. The definition is two negatives that are side by side with no number between them. So when it's talking about two negatives, it means two negative signs. So this is a negative sign right there, and this is a negative sign right there. Is there a number in between those negative signs? No. no. Okay, so just think about that. Whenever there's two negatives side by side with nothing else between them, that's called a double negative. If you ever have a double negative, they both become a positive, okay? That's like, just think about it. It's too much negativity. You don't want a bunch of negativity around, so we're going to get rid of it. When there's two negatives side by side, you can switch them. Now, automatically just turn them into positives instead of negatives. All right, so let's look at our first example here. You'll see that there's 12 minus negative 9. Do you see that I have a double negative? Mm -hmm. What makes something a double negative? If there's two negative sides in front of them. Two negatives side by side with no number in between them. So what happens to those two negatives? They both become a positive. So here's a step that I want you guys to write now. I want you to rewrite it now. And instead of saying 12 plus plus 9, it just means 12 plus 9. Okay, but it's important. I want to see this step there on your homework tonight and in your notes today. Okay, guys, what's 12 plus 9? 21 is correct. Okay, so 12 minus negative 9 means 21. Let's go ahead and go on to the next one. Okay, you'll see here I've got negative 10 minus negative 5. Do I have a double negative? Yes. Why? Because I have two negatives side by side with no number in between them. Okay, so they both turn into positives. So now I'm going to rewrite it. Do I need to keep it as negative 10 plus plus 5? No, no. no, it becomes negative 10 plus 5. Now this is what a normal integer type problem would look at. Do I have same sign or different sign? Different, different sign, so what do I do? Subtract. Subtract and take the sign of the larger number. What's 10 minus 5? Five? 5. And is it positive or negative? Negative. Negative, because this right here, 10, was the larger number. So your answer is negative 5. Our story problem today says the highest point on Mount Everest is 8,850 meters. The shore of the Dead Sea is 410 meters below sea level. What is the difference between these elevations? Whenever you see that word difference, do you guys know what sign that means every time? Subtract. 
it will always be a subtraction problem. Okay, now sometimes with story problems, it makes things easier if you can draw a picture, okay? So here we know we are talking about Mount Everest. So go ahead and draw a picture of some kind of a mountain. Mm -hmm. How tall did it tell us that that mountain is? It was 8,850 meters. 8,850 meters, okay? So let's just go ahead and label that. All right, that's the length of how tall it is. The next part it's talking about is the Dead Sea. Okay, so let's just think about a sea. There it is. We see that the shore is 410 meters below the sea. This is where it ends down there. Okay, so this right there, you can see that's at zero. That's where the ground is. But now we are going down below 410. So that's going to be negative 410 meters. Now the question is asking us what's the difference between these elevations. So it's talking about how much space is right there in between them, okay? How long is that distance, okay? So we're going to start with the first thing that we have. We know that it's 8,850 meters. You told me difference, once again, is what sign? Subtraction. Subtraction. So I'm going to subtract. What am I subtracting? negative 410 because it is below sea level. So sometimes it helps just to put little parentheses there because it helps me to see that those are two separate numbers. I'm minusing a negative, okay? What do we call that when we're minusing a negative? A double negative. And what happens whenever we have a double negative? Two negatives are side by side with no number in between. Okay, two negatives side by side with no number in between them. So what do I do with those two double negatives? We're going to just switch this right here into a positive, okay? So now I've got 8,850 plus 410. So if you want to, you can go ahead and add that right there next to it. All right, so as we add this together, what's the answer, guys? Okay, so I heard a lot of people say 9,260, but this is a story problem, so you've got to have units attached to it. 9,260 what? Meters. Meters. Always make sure, and on your homework tonight, you're going to have a story problem. Please make sure that you label it. Every time that you have a story problem, you've got to tell me what the units are, okay? So the difference between those elevations, this entire space that we had right here is 9,260 meters. Number three, copy and complete the statement using less than, greater than, or equal to. This is a review from something that we did last week. Do you guys remember what these little lines right there mean? Uh, uh, um, oh, it's not a bracket. Kind of like it's called absolute value. Okay, everyone say absolute value. Absolute value. Now, if you remember when we were talking about absolute value before... Let's just imagine that we've got a number line that looks like this. Does anyone remember what absolute value means? It's the distance that a number is from what? Zero. From zero. Okay, so right now we're talking about a negative five. We're trying to find the absolute value of negative five. To come over here, you'll see I've got to jump one, two, three, four. Five. So what's the absolute value of negative five? five? It is five. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and erase this. You guys don't have to do a number line there. But just as a recap of what absolute value means, you simply underneath it, I want to see the work that looks like this. What's the absolute value of negative five, would you said? Five. It is positive five. Okay, so now help me out, Michael. What sign should go in there? Uh, um, six is greater than five. Six is greater than five is correct, which means six is greater than the absolute value of negative five. Jakari, next up, what's the absolute value of negative nine? Nine. nine. Emma, what's the absolute value of negative two? Two. Two. So, Kyla, read to me what it should say. Um, nine is greater than two. You are correct, which means the absolute value of negative nine is greater than the absolute value of negative two. There's no work to do here on the four, but what's the absolute value of negative four? Four. So what should the answer be? Equals. Equals. So four is equal to the absolute value of negative four. Final review for today. Put these integers in order from least to greatest. What's the tiniest number you see there? Negative 20. Negative 20. What's next? Negative 
Then what? Then what? All right. How many of you guys got that correct all on your own? If you did not, go ahead and fix it. But notice, if this is my zero right here, what always will be to the left of a zero? All of your negative numbers will always be to the left, and then everything else on this side will always be positive numbers. This is tonight's homework. As normal, there are only 10 problems. <laughs>